four years ago, our toddler was abducted. Unlike the movies, I didn't fall to the floor sobbing. I was frantic. I didn't know whether to run out in the street searching or if I was supposed to wait by the window, waiting. And at night, I laid in bed, tossing and crying and praying, just trying to get my brain to think straight, to decide what to do next. And even though my husband was only a foot away, I still felt alone. It took me three days. I think of myself as a reasonably intelligent person. And it still took me three days to figure out the reason I was on the verge of vomiting all the time was because my body was going crazy. I kept telling myself, you've got to be strong for your child and your other children. Don't be weak. Three days before I finally figured out, you're going through trauma. It's OK not to be OK. But all I knew is that I wanted my family to be whole again. See, families every day are destroyed when they go through something like this. I know, I talk with them all the time. They end up having a mental breakdown, getting divorced, or committing suicide. I mean, how in the world are we supposed to survive? And all the while, there's this little voice in my heart from God saying, your child is going to come home. Don't give up hope. If it was just you and I together, and I could talk about this, I'd tell you that as the days became weeks and the weeks became months, I started to realize that we were actually stronger than we thought. I was stronger because even though every day I woke up feeling I was, like I was dragging a broken leg, the grief was so heavy, I was still getting up and doing the things that needed to be done and chasing off the horrific thoughts of what could be happening to my child. And a year into this journey, I realized something that in Lord of the Rings, Frodo and Sam already knew. We can't go back to who we once were. But maybe that's the point. I started to realize that something was changing in us and that every moment seemed to become precious. We started to count time. And I started doing things outside of my comfort zone. The first time I took a trip away from my family, because you see, you don't actually ever want to leave your family when something like that happens. I got on a plane. I sat on the plane with my head up against the window, and I cried silently for the entire flight. But having survived being away from them and making it back, I became braver. I started a YouTube channel, and then I wrote a book, and then another, and then another, and then another. And some of the books that I wrote were for communities that had really high suicide rates. They needed to know this book existed. So I had to learn how to build a platform and all about branding. And that was way out of my comfort zone. Building a flat platform means to have thousands of people following you so that when you have a message to share, there are people who are actually listening. And branding means to have a consistent message across all of your social media, your books, your podcast, everything that you do. Well, what about me would be interesting enough for someone to follow me on social media? My exciting life of raising children and knitting was going to bring me dozens of followers. <laughs> but was there anything else? Well, there was one thing. I loved going on adventures, traveling to Israel, Mexico, Jamaica, exploring caves and seeing things I'd never seen before. What if I talked about that on social media? So I did. And the followers came. 
as we became braver, we started doing more things outside of our comfort zone. My friend Tracy and I took a red eye and we flew to Maui, Hawaii. We went to the top of the Haleakala volcano. We rented bicycles and we traveled through the city standing on our bike pedals just like we were 10 years old so we could see the ocean everywhere we went. I ended up whitewater rafting through the Great Smoky Mountains, zip lining over rainforests, hiking, kayaking on the ocean, exploring the arches of Utah, crossing the Mojave Desert, and being invited into the hearts and homes of over half a million viewers on YouTube. And then my family started getting involved. They started saying, hey mom, instead of going from point A to point B, why don't we go somewhere else over here and explore and take pictures for your social media? Okay. Or my husband would say, come on, I'll take one of your signature shots. Because I'm not really a photo person, so my selfies are the phone behind me, taking a picture of the back of my head and whatever cool sights in front of me. But do we really need to see my face on there? Not so much. I was there. But we don't need a picture like that. But we started coming out of our shell as a family together from branding and becoming more adventurous together. Branding actually helped heal our family. And then to go on these amazing adventures we started taking and writing all these books, I had to get in shape. So I started going to the gym. And then I started getting invited to incredible events. I've been invited to the Oscar, Grammy, and Golden Globe after parties with incredible celebrities. Heck, I have a handwritten letter from Warren Buffett on my wall written to me. Who had I become? I was becoming the best version of myself so that when the day comes that our child comes home, I will be braver, I will be stronger, and I will be the kind of person that can help them heal and not the person I was before. We all have life-changing events. Some people end up dead. Others, they end up homeless. But some people, they end up changing the world. And that's our challenge, isn't it? We want a life that's easy and good and peaceful, but growth doesn't happen then. Our hard moments are when we really see how strong or weak we really are. And I realized I can fix everybody's problems. I can't fix my own. But I could reach out a hand and offer hope and comfort to people who were hurting just like we were. People ask me all the time, how can you speak and write and encourage people? And I tell them, well, it's just like in the Avengers, when they tell the Hulk, it's time for you to get angry. And he says, well, that's my secret. I'm always angry. <laughs> and that's my secret. I'm always sad. But what if I had refused that pain? What if instead I had yelled at the ceiling and said, I won't accept this, Lord? We all have a choice to make. We can choose to become broken. We can choose to become bitter. Or we can choose to become better. You can be the hero of your own story. My first life, that's over. I can't go back. Are you ready to join me in the second half? then suit up. <laughs>